A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of Y254. This is Power Talk. My name is Ram Aguko. It's a pleasure being with you each and every Thursday. And of course, I repeat of this particular program airs again every Thursday at 10 p.m. Remember, we are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming live through our website. That's at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254. Engage with us. We value your feedback. Let us know where you're watching us from. And of course, I shall sample your feedback a bit later on during this particular morning conversation. Now, when it comes to family, there is one particular issue that affects many. Many families have, be, uh, have, have fought because of this. Many families have been broken because of this. Many disagree. And because of this particular issue, families do not get to become one. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about alcoholism. And when it comes to alcoholism, you can give us your take in regards to this. How has uh, this particular uh, 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 demon, for lack of a better term, affected your family? Alcoholism and addiction. How is it affecting your children? It, is, it, it has gone so bad that many cannot even fend for themselves, that many even end up in the streets, and sadly so, some even end up dying. It is all about codependency and alcohol addiction in families on this particular conversation on Power Talk to empower you and your family so that you can be able to hear somebody's story, get to know what somebody else went through, and maybe you may find a solution towards your particular problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, to help us in this conversation, I am with, to my extreme right, none other than Agnes Kingori. She is a recovering codependent. Karibu sana, Agnes. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. And of course, next to me is uh, Brenda Ochien. She is a recovery coach. Karibu sana, Brenda. Asante sana. And of course, this is the best panel. There is none. <laughs> that can talk about this, you'll be able to hear their story, and my goodness, you will be touched. You will be touched. I promise you so. You will be touched. Keep engaging with us. The hashtag is Power Talk Show at Ram Aguko and at Y254 Channel. That is the official station handle. Let us know where you're watching us from, and I shall sample your feedback a bit later on during this morning conversation. Power Talk starts now. Now, let me start with uh, you, Agnes. No. Brenda first. Brenda first. There is a terminology that I've used, and then I'll come to you, Agnes. There's a terminology that I've used that many will not be able to understand if we don't, uh, you know, decipher or distinguish or, uh, you know, uh, elongate what it means or define it. We, uh, I mentioned codependency, and, and, and I want to know what that is all about. What is this thing called codependency? Codependency, in a nutshell, is mm -hmm. people addictions. Uh -huh. So if you're a codependent, technically it means that um, there is an addict somewhere. For example, there is somebody who is an addict. Mm -hmm. That person is addicted to a drug mm -hmm. or alcohol or sex mm -hmm. or, or pornography or mm -hmm. gambling. Yeah. That's what he or she is addicted to. Yes. And me, as a person who is very close to that person, mm -hmm. I'm addicted to her or him. You love them. I love them too much, and I love them the wrong way. Wow. In that fact, you can't love too much, so I'm loving them the wrong way. Oh. And what do you mean when you say loving somebody? You can love somebody in the, the wrong, wrong way. way. Yes. <laughs> or do you, I love them huh? in such a way that I actually make them continue in their addiction. Ah. Yes. So, for example, if this person is a drug addict, mm -hmm. Every morning they tell me, oh, suppose it's my son. Oh, mm. mom, please give me money because I need to go to college. Yeah. And I know very well this guy never goes to college. Mm. But I give him the money anyway. And when he gets the money, he's got to go straight into the bar or mm. to, to, to the person who sells him drugs. Mm -hmm. And so he's not going to go to school. I'm going to be called. He's not in school. When he comes back, I'll ask him, why weren't you in school? And he will tell me, oh, this and that and the other. Tomorrow morning, he'll ask me for money again. And I'm and gonna give him money him going again. <laughs> that is being a codependent. Yes. And you're not offering a solution towards that particular problem no. because you love them. Because I love them. Yeah, yes. Huh? And it's driven by fear. 
perhaps I'm, I'm afraid that if I say no, he's going to hate me. If I say no, he'll go and go Kabisa, he'll leave me. And I'm terrified of, of being left. Wow. Possibly it's very deep rooted. Right from childhood, I have abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. So I cling to things and people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that is what being codependent means. Yes. Now, um, let me come to you, Agnes. You have a wonderful, inspiring story. Um, let's get to know your story um, from the beginning. <laughs> ah, I will, I'm the eighth born in my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, us being a big family, a eighth born was a burden somehow. My parents were Christians, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of alcohol in the family. So my bigger brothers and my aunts were actively abusing all kinds of alcohol, drugs. At that age, I knew, I didn't know that uh, bang, bang could be planted in a coffee plantation. Mm. But in my father's coffee plantation, there was a bang. And they would put it on top of the roof so that it may dry up mm. so that the seeds may not go back to the to the plantation to the coffee plantation that's what the father my father was told it was it was encouraged Everyone it was it. not encouraged he didn't even know that it was being planted it looked like another weed we call it uh, mufagi uh -huh. in mount kenya uh -huh. So, and it smelled almost the same. So whenever my father would ask, why are you putting some weed on top of the roof? Uh, my brothers and my uncles who are abusing hmm. would uh, tell him that uh, so that the seeds may not go back to the, to become more troublesome in the coffee plantation. Oh, and I hear they were playing with his mind. Eh? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And since he was a rich man and a prominent man, mm. he had this, uh, the picture the neighbors saw. Mm. Ah, nothing could uh, get into that home. But believe you me, when my uncles drank from my mother's side, my aunts used to drink. Mm. Everything turned outside, inside out, because they would come with the women, men, mm -hmm. and I am about eight years, ten years. Mm. Uh, I saw two pictures of these grown-ups, and I was not supposed to talk, to say anything about it. Don't talk, don't feel, don't, don't cry. And I couldn't report. My father was busy outside, hmm. and my mother was also a businesswoman. So she was, most of the time, we were left by, to our uncles and aunts. And uh, because I'm supposed to, to obey them, hmm. I never talked about it. So, so you saw this happening? I saw. You knew it was wrong? I didn't know. You did not know it was wrong? Mm -mm. Did you engage in it? In smoking? No. I hated it, it. I hated alcohol. I hated uh, anything. I hated their behavior. Mm. I even hated growing up. Because I said, if, I, if growing up would mean this, then I wouldn't want to grow up. And I was eight years. Mm -hmm. So much, much later when I, I came to a recovery program, that's when I was told that uh, that was... Uh, the, the drug abuse, alcoholism. That's when it was explained to me. Mm. But believe you me, I said that I would never drink and I would also not marry a, dr a drunkard. A drunkard. That's, what you, you, that's the promise you, you, you made? I promised myself. When you were younger? Yeah. And I made sure. I finished my high school. I didn't drink. I didn't use. I didn't even engage with anybody who used or drank. Mm -hmm. I was a church person mm -hmm. until I got married to one who pretended for two years that he can never drink. Wait until you, the day I gave birth. It was like a bomb which 
pop. He didn't come home for four days. All that time. All that he, time. He used to drink, but you never knew. He didn't show. He didn't come home drunk. He didn't even show any sign of drinking. Because I had specifically told him that if ever you would drink, we would not stay together. So he played his cards right. Until I get my first body. Now, you will pick up your story from there. And I want to hear it from you, Brenda. Um, you see, you've heard what you said. Families engaging in drug use and drug abuse. Walipanda. It is in their home. <laughs> you know, what makes it interesting is it is in your home, but your own father does not know about it. What makes it also even more interesting is you are married to this person, but you don't know that they are addicts or they take alcohol or they take uh, drugs or they abuse drugs. You know, uh, 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 how can we solve such kind of cases in family? Is, is, is it possible to detect or is it that we love them too much or so much that we can't even detect <laughs> such signs? Yeah, many times huh. the dependents are in denial. I mean, it, it might be very, a very, very subconscious thing. It can be a subconscious thing where you might see the sign, you might, somebody might even mention it, but you just, you say no. no not even somebody mentioning it. You might get that inkling that something is there or something is going on, mm. but you just deny it. You say no, it can't be. And later on, people might even tell you, I thought I saw your boiler here and there. And you'll say, uh, uh, no, he just does business meetings. That mm, even mm. if it's in a bar, it's just a business meeting. Muse, I think that there's some funny things which grow in your farm. Mm. And just like she's saying, he will say, probably it is that weed which is growing <laughs> over there. You know, those guys know their work. You mm. just go into denial. Yeah. You don't see. Were it in front of you, you would not see. That's when we start talking about elephants in the room. Can mm. you imagine an elephant in the middle of this room and yeah. you can't see it? You, 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 you never even suspected even a bit about what's going on. Your father never suspected even a bit about what's go, what was going on. My father was a Christian. And nothing wrong would go on in a Christian home, mm. he believed. Mm -hmm. My mother was a choir person. Even my aunts, the ones who are drinking on any other day, on Saturdays they're in church. <laughs> How can you think ab b bad about them? And they Come are the on. ones who are uh, teaching you uh, catechism. Until <laughs> I joined the program, my dear guy, I have been living in denial all this time. <laughs> <laughs> then my husband, <laughs> he knew that if he plays this dirty uh, game mm. before I got a child, mm. I would leave. And you were strict about it? I was strict about it. I had suffered as a child. So he waited until I get a firstborn. And he knew as a Christian. In fact, we did a very big wedding, church wedding. But believe you me, it was drama. What do you mean drama? Because it was not, we were not serious. We, we didn't mean what. It was just for show. Sure. Yeah, for show. Sure. I don't know what was. So it was a big show. So that I may be grounded in that home. Hmm. I had a good career, so I had good money. I was sharp in the head. He was also sharp. Hmm. So we, we, we used to see <laughs> a brighter future mm -hmm. together. That did not happen. But. Uh, <laughs> My boys thought that we were the perfect family, my first two boys. Mm. But uh, towards, at one point, uh, this drama just added. And then we, we, it's like uh, the egg broke. We were left shattered. And that was after you gave back to your first child. Now the, the second, second one. The second one. Mm. Now, let me 
push you back again. Let's go back again in time. You said that you suffered as a child because of drug drugs in the house and drug abuse in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, um, how was it? If you could, if, just in a nutshell, and maybe you also piece of advice to a parent who is watching you today. Namtotoake is in, is engaged in this thing, and they either know or do not know. But let's get your story. How was it for you as a child? Number one. I didn't have anybody to tell what I was seeing, what I was hearing. Mm. My parents could not listen to me. Actually, you, you, you cannot talk about grown-ups and mm. you are a child mm -hmm. in my family. Nimakosa. And you used to get a beating. I, I remember getting beatings until I, I, I kind of uh, nabbed. I became nab mm -hmm. because of... Uh, even talking about being um, abused by, being beaten by my uncles. Mm. Um, so I didn't talk about anything, or including when I'm sick. I couldn't say I have a stomachache or a headache. Because before, you, if you talk before, you, you'd get beaten. You get beaten. And that's a mistake most parents or make. Or if you cease anything. Imagine you are not supposed to see a drunkard struggling with the opposite sex in the compound. You are not supposed to see. That's what I was trained. Most parents end up beating their child because mm. of What's your take in regards to that? Very, very damaging. Yeah. Because that is how abuse can thrive. You can imagine even in the home, if a child is being sexually abused, and this usually happens by somebody you know very well, mm -hmm. it is that houseboy, housegirl, that um, uncle or something. It means that they cannot say. Mm. If I'm to say, if me as a child, I'm to say so-and-so has touched me in a bad way, I will be beaten. Mm -hmm. I will they, be they don't believe you. They don't believe me. They prefer not to believe because they don't want to deal with it. Imagine having to confront your brother that you have abused now my child. But should you do it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Even if it means breaking your family into yes. two. Because this person will continue to perpetrate whatever he's doing. You're damaging your child. The child is being damaged. Mm -hmm. An abused person eventually will become an abuser. Mm -hmm. So this is becoming a very rotten society. Do mm. yes. you agree with that? Huh? I agree because today I, I work with families who are abused. And this is exactly what I hear from, mm -hmm. from their homes. Yeah. Because yeah. your child complains about something, like in your mm. I've actually seen that happen. Mm. And, the ch and the children always feel afraid. They yeah. say, ah, um, the, yeah. she won't believe me uh, because that is her brother. Mm. Yes. Uh, mtoto, uh, mtoto wake, na mm. Wale kutoka kwa tumbo moja. Mm. But we need to break this chain. That's why, that's why this conversation is very important. We need to break this chain. How can we do it? We do it. Chains are broken from the level of usually the codependent. Me, the mother, the, the parent, for example, the parent who is seeing all this happen. Now, this child is not going to be a normal child. Mm -hmm. It might end up being a very silent child. In school, there's always that child, you know, who never says anything, hardly mm -hmm. engages in anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get bullied because what's wrong with you? Why don't you ever, ever say anything? But they're carrying so much pain with them. And yeah. they've been told, as Agnes has told us, you may not talk. Mm. Some of them have been told that mm. the message that they're getting is you should not even have been existing in the first place. <laughs> My goodness. So vanishing Veronica, there are people who always just want to disappear into the shadows. Mm -hmm. There's another one who's going to become a cartoon, eh? Mm -hmm. In order to be able to, to deal with their pain and the pain which is in the family, even among the siblings, we call them a mascot. Yeah. He's always going to be hilarious, making people laugh, you know, <laughs> doing all sorts of vitukos. <laughs> they want to make others laugh, but deep down they're not happy. Deep down they're so sad. Deep down they have a lot of pain. In fact, it's like that, you know, like when you see the logo of, of drama, there's always a happy face and a sad yes, face. Yeah, there's a happy yeah. face which when you remove, there's just tears. Mm -hmm. That one. Another one will become a scapegoat. Very naughty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You send him to school, he doesn't go to school. He mm -hmm. goes somewhere else, mm. plays truant, 
hooks up with the wrong people. You've been brought up, I don't know, in Mothaika or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you want to hang out with people in the, in the, in the shanties and such like, you, because you become their hero. Yeah. You know, you, you're the Mudosi, so you're the hero. Of course, you're going to learn to drink, to drug, mm -hmm. to do all those things, mm -hmm. to hold guns and wow. all that kind of wow. thing. Wow. So me as the codependent, me as the parent who is the codependent, the chain breaks at me. The chain does not break at the child. Of course, mm -hmm. there's a child who's a golden child, who is a hero, who everybody loves him. His work is now to, to make the family look normal, make mm -hmm. the family look successful. Mm -hmm. He's going to be an overachiever, you know. Mm -hmm. The best child you ever saw. When I was in school, you always had to pull up your socks, but we hated it. But this one, their socks will always be up, literally pull up their socks. And they're just hiding the pain that is there, hiding it. But you see, the thing is, they can't mask it. I mean, they're masking it, but they cannot get rid of it. Mm -hmm. The chain is broken at the level of me, the codependent. No, no, no. I I'm, I'm, I'm bothered and I'm wondering, what about the case of parents who take alcohol and they have their child? And how, how, you know, negative can that affect a child? Because, you know, you're doing it for, for, for fun, you know, because you're with your, with your fellow brothers, and then on, on, on Jesha. And number two, I'm looking at two sets of children. The first set of children uh, of a child is the one who is growing around a family where alcohol and drug abuse is uh, existing, and they choose to follow a different path, mm -hmm. like you. Mm -hmm. You said, that is not the path I will follow. But the second type of a child is the one that will now get into that particular uh, a trait or culture of alcohol and drug abuse, because that's how the family is. You take on that? Yeah. You see, the child who, who says, I'm not going to be like this and really manages to get completely out of it, it's about ego strength also. It's mm. about even what's happening in the life of this particular child when they're so small. Mm. This family has 11 children, right? Mm. The way the life was when the first three were born is not the same when the middle ones were born. It's not the same as when the last ones were born. Yeah. Mm. Especially middle children really suffer. They're kind of forgotten. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. they're not concentrated. Because the first ones are either loved more or less, <laughs> and empowered. The, and the last then they're empowered. They're empowered. The last ones are, are closeted loved. and loved. You, <laughs> Tajipanga, in the middle. Such a person, and then there's all this abuse going on. Don't be, don't whatever. Yeah. They will not have ego strength. They will not have that confidence. Because they will just, they don't want to shake, rock the boat. So mm -hmm. they will just go with the flow. Yeah. They will just survive from one day to another. Mm -hmm. Even that survival is not very sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... It just depends on that. And again, they're children. So they would need to be then empowered. Mm -hmm. It would need an outside um, force or direction to help them come out of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me, I had a, well, an experience with my children. I have, I have four boys. Mm -hmm. They are not married, they have grandchildren. And uh, because of their father drinking, he was also using drugs and uh, chewing mira and uh, God knows what else. And uh, he used to have so many women in the town we were living, and it was a small town. Um, my children started now behaving in a funny way. They started stealing this alcohol from the cupboard and adding uh, water. Mm. So they started uh, drinking <laughs> very early when they were young boys. That's what many kids do that. <laughs> <laughs> Was it not in an alcoholic environment? I would uh. not worry. Uh. But now what happened later uh, with the father who was a, a graduate teacher mm. in a very big institution, the, the downfall, that's the one now made me understand that uh, it was, this was not the path I would have fallen, mm. got, gotten into. We had to separate for this family to continue. Otherwise, uh, there was a lot of violence between me and him. And uh, everybody thought that I am the bad one. So any time we would fight, everybody would tell me, you are not a good woman. 
Mm. You are supposed to behave well. That's why your husband is getting annoyed. Mm. You are supposed to cook well. That's why your husband is going out with other women. You are supposed to dress well. That's why I'm the bad one. Eh? So I did exactly what I was advised. And uh, most of the time, the advice was always Submit. from <laughs> different sides. Mm. One is telling me to get out of this abusive family. Uh -huh. And the other one is telling me that you, I should work harder. Most of the time I used to work harder. Work harder? What, what do you mean work harder? Doing cook, cook better. More, wash more. Waking at 1 a.m. in the morning and washing the windows. And they are <laughs> very big windows. <laughs> Going to school to learn how to cook. Uh, going for the, the best saloonist, mm. uh, wearing uh, much from head to toe, thinking that I would please uh, the alcoholic. I didn't. The fighting went well, increased until one, one priest told us, mm. this is not a marriage, this is abuse. Now, Agnes... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Oliver uniform. Yeah, green. <laughs> From baka, head to toe. Baka kiatu. Na kuna kitu anaona. He didn't see. He didn't. He came drunk, so he couldn't see what I was wearing. I wish I I knew I would have worn. Ngombe ni sengenge, sengenge ni ngombe. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Uh, now, Basilo knew. I want to know your story now. Um, Apo, Apo Wali, you said that he was pretending to be a good person. I thought. As you thought. Uh, what made him change his mind? What was the trigger? And, 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 and what made you realize that this is not the man I married? The duties. I, he started uh, skipping going to class. And uh -huh. He's a teacher. Uh -huh. I was always going to the hospital to get sick offs. We would fight and we would end up, both of us, not going to work. Mm -hmm. And then the children started fearing him so much. Mm -hmm. So we would always hide under the bed including the maid and uh, i started seeing uh, uh, we say uh, alcoholism is a progressive disease eh? mm. or addiction so he started going down and he went down with us financially uh, socially people stopped coming to my house because they didn't know what which state they will fight us sometimes they will fight us fighting. Other times they will fight him not uh, wearing proper dressing. And uh, God knows what else. So, so if you have visitors, does he know that you have visitors? Did he know that Wagino Mikuja now... You are not allowed to bring visitors in the house unless they are drinking buddies. Yeah, hey. and if you bring, mm -hmm. including his own brothers and parents, you have to ask for permission. Mm -hmm. And he would go drink and forget that he, the father was coming to see him. Then the, he the, would. The father-in-law. My father. Your and father. Now, now that is his father-in-law. His father now. Mm. I I would announce that the father is coming to see the son. Mm. Only to be told that it is a setup. They wanted to, to ruin his drinking uh, happiness. Why do you bring visitors? I remember one time he, he chased some women. Although in our culture, uh, having women coming uh, to sleep over was normal. But in my house, you couldn't. They came to bring a, another lady to give birth. In the, we were next to the hospital. Mm. You know, they were chased at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and they were told this is not a, a hospital extension. 
Go back. Now, you, you only fika sangat. At what time did, did they get to the house? About uh, 10. You know, Matatos got finished at uh, around 9 then. Yeah, yeah. So they said, oh, our son is in this school. Mm. It is from his village, not from my village. Mm. <laughs> then he comes at 2 a.m. And I tell him, uh, oh, the women from your village had come to bring another lady to give birth. Thinking that it is something good, I'm saying. They had to leave at 2 a.m. They went and slept in the outpatient. You said you, you, you said that um, at some point you had to hide under the bed yes. together with your children and your and household. The maid, yeah. Why? Fear. Fear. I was used to fear so much that I even feared the telephone ringing. I would jump, and now I wouldn't do anything. If I was cooking, I would abandon the cooking because of the fear. When you know that he's on his way coming? Even imagine that he would come, that fear would overwhelm me. And then I would not even suckle the baby. And that is the time the babies were, were young. How old were, uh, you, you had a suckling baby at, at, at that time? Um, all this time I used to have babies. You see, in an alcoholic environment, mm. having babies is the, is the game. Because there is no more fun in this home. So your work is to give babies. So that, at that time... <laughs> They came, became three, they ended up four. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, Brenda, <laughs> no, no, you are, you are even shocked more than I am. <laughs> What's coming in your mind when you hear, he, as you're hearing her story? I'm, I'm looking at a professional, I'm looking at somebody who came from a family that had a lot of money and, and ends up like this and does not have the power is not empowered in that, and within herself doesn't have the power and doesn't know where else she can go mm. to get the power. And you know what you were saying earlier, asking earlier about this thing of people giving their children, going to the bar with their kids and giving children alcohol. Some people give actually babies alcohol so that they keep quiet yeah, and yeah, don't cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is that this child or this baby is going to develop tolerance in their bodies mm -hmm. for drugs, alcohol, chemicals, basically. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? Meaning even when they grow up and they're trying to drink socially, mm -hmm. we all go out after this and we want to drink socially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to go away after two beers, three beers. You know, I mean, you might even leave the beer there. For, because you have reached it, you have reached the level where it has satisfied you. You went to, you know, there's a certain way you want to feel. That's why you're drinking beer and not Fanta, right? And you're mm -hmm. going to attain it after two beers if you're a normal person. Mm -hmm. She'll be happy with one beer. For me, I need six, eight, ten mm -hmm. in order to reach where you were. Because the first four were just water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My body is resistant. And, and now I am going to become an alcoholic because what? the quantities of alcohol that yes. I need in mm -hmm. order to feel what normal people feel is going to be massive. The first four bottles are just water. Yeah. In fact, I don't even know why you're drinking beer. <laughs> Give me gin. But you were also at some point addicted. Yes. Tell me about that. For me, I, I got addicted and I didn't realize that I was getting addicted. In fact, that very tolerance I'm talking about. Whereas I grew up in a family that they were Christian, they never drank alcohol. There was never, there was once alcohol in the house, which was a gift, and there was hysteria in that house until we had to get rid of it. Um, my environment was completely alcohol free. Mm -hmm. But once I started to drink and to drink socially, um, I never realized that I was getting into problems. Why? Because I never used to mess. Because what would give you an indicator that you're drinking too much, or you're drinking badly, is that you know, you're messing. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. I'm drinking, I'm falling on the tables, you're, you're, you know, you're telling me, I, I, I'm not going out with you again ever, you're just an embarrassment. People are showing me you know, videos of things I did, dancing on the table and all that. 
For me, <laughs> I used to drink and not get like that. And people would say, isn't that a bit too much? Or uh, why are you drinking vodka in the first place and you're a lady? You know, ladies drink sherry and mm. you know, um, kingfish and things like that. And I'm a people pleaser. I was a people pleaser. So if you say that, I don't want to upset you. So I'll drink what you're telling me to drink. But when I get home, I'll take You'll it very many... you go back to the hard stuff. Yes, mm. or I'll even drink it before I come. And you won't even know, by the way, that I've had something Be to because drink. Because it's a way you, you, your body or your system go um, adjusted yeah. to, to, mm. to that hard stuff? Yeah. Okay. So that by the time I was realizing I have a problem, and the only thing that made me really brought me down to earth and say I have a problem is when I contracted TB. The doctor told me you cannot drink alcohol, and I was suffering so much I had neglected it, such that I was suffering so much it was so badly gone. Then I'm like, yeah, 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 swore upon a stack of Bibles, I will not drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. And they gave me the medication. And I, th I spent two days without drinking alcohol. I felt as though my spirit was leaving my body. I was dying. I came to realize I cannot. I cannot do without alcohol. Mm -hmm. If I do without alcohol, I'm, I'm, I'm literally dying. <laughs> it was so hard. It was so hard, but even the way I physically felt, my body was giving me grief. And then in the morning, demons would arrive in the name of hallucinations. Mm -hmm. You are seeing things. I see things mm -hmm. and hear voices. Eventually, I would hear voices even in broad daylight. I'm hearing music which nobody else can hear, auditory hallucinations. I tried to do something with myself, go and look for work. All over Kenyatta Avenue, I'm seeing giraffes, great big giraffes with teeth. So I would, they're illusions. Those are trees, actually, but me, I'm seeing giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> so around about that time, I thought, OK, I think I have a problem. <coughs> You're seeing giraffes. Mm. <laughs> That's a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what about when, when you see somebody, like a human being? Or not, what I used it? to see very many human beings with green eyes and distorted eyes, and they were always looking at me malevolently. I don't know how come I'm the only one who sees these people in town and all over. I even saw some. I went to Toy and I saw others. But I ah. guess they didn't really look like that. Mm. Those were still illusions. They were just normal people, but that's what I would see. I would see things that are not there or wow. that are distorted. My perception was distorted. <laughs> it was scary. Ah. I was always afraid, and eventually I became house ridden. I couldn't go out because of that. I was uh -huh. scared of red buildings. Terrif I would get panic, an actual panic attack if I saw a red building. The funny thing is that this red building, I've been seeing it all along. I even used to jog and pass this red building, you know? Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, a real panic attack. Whether a car is coming, a bus, I won't move. I'm just frozen because I've seen a red building. I have no idea why a red building, I guess that's also something way deep inside my mm -hmm. um, unconscious mind, you, something. You just have no idea why it's scaring you. No. It's just scaring you. It's just scaring me very, very much. At some point, I even acquired, uh, I became a journalist. And I had to go to, to get my pass. Was it renew it? Mm. Was it in Jogo House or where? All I know is that when I got there, I couldn't get inside the building because the building is made of brick. Mm. So it, I, was so, I tried, I tried, I couldn't. So up to today, it has never been renewed. This is many years later. <laughs> <laughs> and, that is, and that was the end of that? <laughs> that was the end of it. I, hey. I, I, I never wrote again, not professionally. I haven't stopped watching news because I didn't want to see other people's stories, my colleagues' stories. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's how bad it can be. Uh, 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 let me come from you, to you again, still, about the addiction part. Um, how did it affect your family? Oh. Um, even eating habits. As the alcoholic continued drinking and getting himself into a mess, mm -hmm. the whole family started adjusting. So we could eat very quickly and go to bed. Mm. We could not even sit on the table, on the dining table, because we never knew at what point the fighting would start. And uh, he used to say that, it's the women I hang around with are the ones making me behave badly. So I dropped all my friends, including the church members. You, I couldn't you allow... You stopped going to church too? Yeah, I had to stop. 
Actually, what used to happen is the minute we used to stay uh, less than 10 minutes from the church I used to go to. But he would wait until 10 minutes before service time. And then he would say that he wants uh, soup. <laughs> Oxtail soup, and That's it has to be angry. boiled for an hour. And I have to attend to He used to say that uh, he is my God, and the, without him, I cannot live. And I believed. You believed it? Yeah. And in fact, I went and told my, my religious reader, and he said, Oh, obey him. Your pastor told you that your husband is your God. I told him that I don't come to church because my husband says that I have to attend to him. And what, what did, what did uh, your, your church leader say? He didn't say, advise anything. He, no, number one, the good thing about him is that uh, when he's not drunk, he's mm. a saint. <laughs> he's the one who will take the boys to the church. Mm give the biggest of a tolly. And he would go on for a month or even more until the next now drinking beach. And he would come uh, wasted and God knows what, a nobody. And uh, oh, well, having uh, been beaten all over and even having bandages. So I couldn't marry the two people, the one who is not drinking and behaving like a father and a good man and a teacher and a professional, and this other person who has all of a sudden without notice drunk. We were supposed to go somewhere, maybe sometimes it's Christmas time or festive time or even a birthday. And you appear the opposite. So there was a lot of confusion. I couldn't keep promises. I remember one day the grandmother, his own grandmother, had invited us in Eldoret. We were supposed to travel and we used to have a car. He went to, to check, get the car checked. And he came after four days <laughs> without the car. <laughs> What happened to the car? <laughs> he forgot. He forgot the he, car. He left it at the garage and he went drinking and he forgot that we were supposed to go somewhere. And because he is a man, he asked, Hey. Kwani, where are you going? Where are you going? I told him, but you promised your grandmother we will go. Hmm. And the children were all set. And those days we used to borrow sweaters from mm. the neighbor. Mm. Those because are the days. <laughs> and even the hard bag, it used to rotate in the, the neighborhood. The neighborhood. <laughs> 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 so I've done all that. I've given the maid uh, go home. Leave Amanda, your children have yeah. gone. They Mabu. all said waiting to go to the eh, Only grand. for the man to come without a car. After, After the festive season. After four days. Yeah. You can imagine the, the, the feeling as a mother. I have to explain to these boys why we are not going to the grandmother. And I have to write to them. Because I want to protect this man, I also want to protect our name we are married, remember? Yeah. Our name. And, this, and, and there is the way the society sees. His shame is my shame. Yeah. In fact, uh -huh. I remember uh, I used to get a stomachache when he has a hangover. He's the one who is having a hangover. But it's kind of transferred, the pain is transferred to me because I'm the wife. I want us to take a break. We'll be back and then we'll, we'll get to know more about, more about your stories. Wow, wow. 
guys, keep engaging with us. The hashtag is Power Talk Show at Ram Maguko, and that Y254 channel is where you can be able to engage with us in this particular conversation. Uh, uh, tell us what you think about how you know um, alcohol and drug addiction has affected your family. How deep rooted is it in your home, and uh, what are the, the possible solutions that you've managed to come up with so far? Are you still struggling with it? What? is the way forward today we are talking about this particular conversation and of course be part of uh, of, of this particular uh, show my name is ram aguko at ram aguko is where you can be able to find me on all my social media handles we are taking a break we'll be back in a bit after this i want us to find out what solution did you guys come up with and are you still together for you when it comes to the addiction, how did you solve it? I'm, I, I can see you're working with a, with, a, with a crutch. Is that as a result of addiction? How did it affect you in the long term? And do you still have the employment? Women are affected. What of the nyumbani? What is the role of you? Let's take a break. We'll be back in a bit. This is Power Talk. <laughs> Y254. Imagine. That's right. That's why we're back. Thank you so much for being part of this morning conversation. This is Power Talk. It's all about understanding how uh, you know diverse alcoholism and drug addiction can be, especially in a family. Ladies and gentlemen, the hashtag is Power Talk Show at Ram Aguko and that Y254 channel. That's where you can be able to engage with us. Head over to our Facebook page and drop in your comments on the comment section uh, on uh, that particular page. And we shall sample your feedback a bit later on during this particular pro program. I am with Agnes Kingori, a recovering codependent, and Brenda Ching, who is a recovery coach, uh, giving us their story. But now, before we went on that break, uh, Agnes, you said it was so bad that now you have to take the blame. Because who you need, this is your husband, you cannot air your dirty linen in the public. But at the end of the day, people blame you. Now, let me touch on that particular aspect here. Because women are always the ones who are being told that if your husband is cheating on you, you are the problem. If your husband is drinking, you are the problem. If the husband cannot stay at home, you are the problem. In fact, I got those uh, accusations, even from the church, my own church, and from my parents. I was told that I'm not a good mother. Hmm. I don't cook well. I don't take care of the children. I, so what I did, I increased in doing good. Hmm. Hoping they will change. Hoping that he would change. He would... He would uh, look at my side look at me mm -hmm. you know he would stop going out with other women the problem uh, initially was going with other women then it came to finances then it came to the corrupts of the even our careers both of us so it, you lost your career i also you lost, lost my career because of the depressions now let's talk about uh, about that particular aspect here. But before I come to you, because I want to know uh, how it affected you now personally, uh, Brenda, uh, you you said you you became addicted to it. How did your family uh, handle such kind of uh, a case, and uh, how are they receiving you? They didn't know. Fortunately, I didn't live with them. I lived with an elder sister. Mm -hmm. She was a workaholic, so she didn't even see it coming. Because just as Agnes is saying, an alcoholic is very two-faced, mm -hmm. Jekyll and Hyde. Mm -hmm. So many times she would see the sober me, the yeah. very hard worker. You know, I, am, I, I do things in extremes. So when I clean, I really clean. And when I do whatever, I really do whatever. I was working in the entertainment industry. Okay, sometimes I'd be around at home, but other times I'd go and do a show and have lots of money and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So she didn't really see it. I mean, why am I sleeping in is probably, she thinks, is because 
I had a late show last mm, night. You're tired. Yes, I'm tired. Kumbe. <laughs> Kumbe. Kwa ground is different. Kwa ground is different. Kumbe had snuck out at the break of dawn at 6 o'clock to go into Gigi and get, you know, more alcohol because the demons are, you know, even a carpet, the ones that have um, flowers, mm. I would see dragons and mm. things on them. Mm. You know, I only see those things in movies. <laughs> <laughs> I thought movies only exaggerate things. Uh, they are so Kume, real. Kume, the movies are saying the, the real thing. Mm. You're seeing, you, the you, real you're seeing thing. a dragon in the yeah. carpet. Mm. And they're all looking at you malevolently. The only thing that's going to cure that, and turn our ants are walking. Tashitari, tash, 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 tashitari uh -huh. hallucinations. Ants are walking all over me. Those are your nerves. Only thing that will cure that is a drink. Mm. Yeah. So the guy even, he used to call me names. The guy, the Gigi, because I'm knocking his door at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. I would even have knocked earlier, to, except it was dark, you know? Mm -hmm. I need a drink. And I wouldn't drink it there. I mean, I would take the stuff and go and sneak back into the house, drink it, become steady, even be able to shower. Otherwise, I won't shower for four days. Even be able to shower, <laughs> make <laughs> breakfast. So who does my sister see? The very nice younger sister who always has everything in order. But you won't shower for four days. No, and it's not. I'll put on the heater. I'll put one finger. In the shower, <laughs> see you there, really, and then you wash here, only here. <laughs> Hygiene what? is not an issue. Uh uh. No. It's not what, an issue. what would be your piece of advice to that family that is watching you today that uh, is struggling with uh, their child or their husband or their wife that is an, an addict? Mm. And of course, um, your piece of advice to even people who work and live with an addict, how would you prefer that they handle such a person? Mm -hmm. First, I'll tell you, open your eyes. I'll tell every family that, open your eyes. Because in this, in this country, addiction and drinking is, is just so real. Eh? Yeah. Open your eyes to the signs that are there. You may be able to arrest it early. Mm -hmm. If you already have an alcoholic, I mean, the day to help that alcoholic is today. And the way we do this, there's something called an intervention. This is a carefully planned procedure. Yeah. You have an alcoholic in the family. There's no need of me, the mother, nagging and nagging. She's mm -hmm. telling you how, she, how it used to go. Yeah. I will nag this person, he will drink. I will beat this person, he will drink. I will lock him out, he will drink. I mm -hmm. will pray for him. Keisha, while I'm doing that, he's in the bar. Mm -hmm. I will go to the witch doctor, he will drink. <laughs> because a codependent is always trying to control. And the thing is, I'm powerless over this person. When you get into recovery, you will learn that you are powerless over another human being. I cannot control another human being. Yeah. So this is what I must do. I must um, look for an intervention, try and make an intervention for this alcoholic, mm -hmm. carefully plan things. I must choose these people who are going to do this intervention very carefully. Maybe somebody from the church, somebody he respects and likes. Not that person who's going to nag him and tell him it's okay for your husband to beat you. Mm -hmm. um, um, maybe his best friend who has even been asking me, hey, what's going on? Somebody he respects. Mm -hmm. About four to six people. Yeah? And then we're going to plan this thing that now we're going to do an intervention on this person. This person is in denial. Denial comes with addiction the same way fever comes with malaria. It's mm -hmm. not because he's a bad person that he's in denial. That's just mm -hmm. part of the disease. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to tell this person that he needs help. Yeah. And the way we're going to bring him to the point where he accepts he needs help mm -hmm. is that we are going to convene a location, a place, a specific day, yeah, and then yeah. we're going to call this person. Mm -hmm. And in a very calm and loving manner, but very assertive manner, we're going to tell him you have a problem. And each one of us is going to tell him why we think he has a problem. And, 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 and when does rehab come in play? Or, or, or rehab will come after yeah. this. After this person has come to the place where he agrees that he has a problem, mm -hmm. then we'll stay. And we will already have done our research. Again, I will tell families, do your research. Don't just go to the nearest rehab or one you have heard about. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, many rehabs today are just businesses. Mm -hmm. They don't care about you. Mm -hmm. They don't care whether your person gets better or not. In fact, if he relapses, the better. Because that means that they will say, They'll bring back you back. Again. They'll come back again. A good rehab has good counselors. Yeah? Trained mm -hmm. counselors and people who really care, people who have a passion for helping other but people. But what, what if the addict does not want to go for rehab? Oh, yes. So during this intervention, we will have planned. Each of us is going to give him a consequence. Me as the mother, 
If you are not going to rehab, please move out of my house today because I'm done with your drama. What if they say, yeah, okay? What if okay. they go? Go. <laughs> All go. this time, the problem has been I've been shielding him from the consequences. Go. You want them to learn from their consequences? Go. All right, I'll come back to that. Let me come to you, Agnes. Your story. All this time, I've been hearing about your husband. Let me hear about you. How did this affect you? And uh, how did, did it change your life? Uh, everything. It changed everything. Because uh, that career person went, that decent person left. Mm -hmm. The person who, who bathes every day, who washes his body every day, left. Because if uh, your husband is not uh, bathing, why should you bathe? <laughs> and you are sleeping in the same bed. Who will know now who is not bathed? So I stopped. I, uh, my hygiene, my, my health, my, my uh, uh, eating behaviors, they all changed. And I became uh, very thin and uh, um, the person who puts on oil and is not going anywhere mm. because of the dry of the, the dryness of the skin, mm -hmm. that's who I became. Wow. Then uh, when I, my second born was uh, two years and we, have, we had fought for quite some time. Uh, he decided that uh, because he goes to the bar and the women snatches him, I should be taking him to the bar. So I decided to be take, going to watch on him. So women snap, they steal? They, they steal, they used to steal him. That's what he used to say. Also they take his money and everything no, else? No, him, the person, the body, the, the, man. the man. The man. So you, so if you're there. So he demanded that I go become his watchman. We go home together. Eh. I don't understand it. I'm trying to really... <laughs> you cannot <laughs> understand it because you are not the woman. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also understand because you are not living as an alcoholic. But anything could go. Wow. So, I, I kept him company. Hmm. And I'm staying there until 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm taking uh, tea which used to finish at uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, so I would take uh, water and the sodas. But, uh, but being there the whole night, at some point, you were not tempted to drink at some point. I didn't. Until one day, I go to the toilet, hmm. come back, I had left the soda there on the table. Only to drink it and uh, it had something, another taste. That was the head of me. I started drinking there. I didn't know what I was put in the, that soda. And uh, I remember the next uh, two months, I would take myself to the bar and drink, uh, uh, ask for a soda, uh, ask for a alcohol. Your drink was spiked. Someone yes. put something in it. Yeah, did, my sword was did you, put. Did you, did you know who did it and what was put in? I didn't in? ask. I, I, my husband was there, so he, he was supposed to take care of me. He said that I, I get so bored that after one a.m. I don't want to He said that I get so bored that after one a.m. I become so bored and nagging that we should go home. <laughs> so to keep me... Uh, uh, to, to keep, uh, then my voice, I could not raise my voice together with the other drunkards who at some, after some drinks, they started raising their voices. I didn't know why they kept on raising their voices. So he, he wanted that drama and he got it. <laughs> <laughs> but now again, after two years, he didn't like again the drama he, he, he started. Because okay, let, 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 let me fast forward. 
as, as, as you tell us what, what, what made him not like the drama. Fast forward, tell me now, how, what was the worst level, the lowest point that you got to during this whole scenario? But start, start with that part where he didn't like you after two years. Uh, the lowest. The lowest was uh, we had to separate. And I had to go with the boys. Okay, I had to leave the boys. Mm -hmm. I went alone to... I came to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, stayed in a company house. I used to work with the post office, telecom. And uh, then after one year, I was told by the family to pick the children, the other boys. And I had to obey again. I picked them. That time already he had, he had already married another woman with the two, three children. So he was, him he was okay, I was the one who was on the wrong. According to your in-laws? According to him. My in-laws were good. My mother-in-law was a good woman. God mm -hmm. bless her soul in internal peace. Mm -hmm. She used to care for me, but she didn't have the voice. Everybody was saying, ah, you even used to boast that you had the good job, a lot of money. Let's see what you will become. They were laughing at me. My in-laws, including my own brothers and sisters. It's like they were feeling jealous that I had climbed the ladder so fast. Mm -hmm. Then I'm falling like, wow. Mm -hmm. They enjoyed it. But you became an addict. Um, when he uh, put some alcohol in my, 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 my soda, uh, I don't know what else. From there, either what you, I used to do or what the other people used to do to me. Because all what I know is that by that time the company was going down, and I think I went down with it. Mm. We never, I you never used to, by that time I had done accounting, CPA, mm. Mm. one, and I had moved from my office to an accounting office in mm. the same company. And I used to be the, <laughs> the one preparing the final accounts. <laughs> and uh, the drama was, the, 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 the companies then never used to demand ERA report. Mm. So we would delay reports for three years because we are busy drinking, all of us in the office. <laughs> and that was the game every day. Now, when the money started going down, the marriage started going down. Mm. We separated. And uh, it went with uh, all the properties. You lost everything. everything. Everything, including the mabatis on the roof. He sent somebody to remove the mabatis on the roof. Wait, wait. Uh... You're saying that he came and picked everything from when, your home. When I left the, the, my matrimonial home, uh. everything was invested in, in his father's home. So I had to leave without anything, including the boys. I didn't live with the boys. I went alone. Wow. Mm. And within three years, there was nothing. He had sold everything, and so both of us became poor. Poor me, poor me. Both of us. But now, why did you remain with the children? Doesn't he also, isn't in he also the culture, father of the children? In our culture, the children belongs to the woman, not the man. Hmm. Especially Co now, having another woman. The, the, the pressure will be on push these boys away so that they may not demand the land, the inheritance. But now there's nothing to inherit? 
his father's. Um, oh, his yeah. father's. In, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Brenda, um, I'm, I'm told time is not on our side. So I want us to, to bring this conversation to a close. But uh, let me get to hear your story as uh, we, we finalize it. What would be your piece of advice to those who are watching you today um, when it comes to codependency and uh, addiction in families? I will tell people who have addicts in their families that you're the person who is going to help this addict. And before you're going to help that addict, you're going to have to help yourself. You have to snap out of the codependency. Mm -hmm. It's not something you just remove like a dress. Mm. It is something which is a process. Just like the addict is going to go through a 12 steps program, yeah, when, he, when he's in rehab, mm -hmm. from step one up to step 12, in order for him to really get out of addiction, you, me, the codependent, mm -hmm. I have to also go through the same thing. He will go to AA eventually, I need to go to Codependence Anonymous, I need to go to Al Anon. I need to be taught to unlearn mm -hmm. what I learned during all those years that this person was an addict. Mm -hmm. The ways of being, the patterns of thinking, of, of behaving, of feeling, which are dysfunctional, which make me a codependent, I have to unlearn them. Mm -hmm. Like peeling an, an onion yeah, bit by bit. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And, it's and a process. But and if it, I is just say it is possible still. It is possible. It is, possible. It is completely possible. Mm -hmm. It'll be possible for me to let go. Like I'm saying, let him, whatever his consequences, it'll be possible for me actually to let go and tell him I'm not giving you money mm -hmm. because I know that this and this is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And the fear, well, faith is going to come where the fear was. There will not be fear. When my, when my activities change, his will change. Mm -hmm. When he realizes, eh, mom's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Eh, she's not going to come and protect me anymore. Mm -hmm. He's going to change. They are very intelligent. What they was know. your lowest point that you got? What was the lowest point that you got to throughout this period the or season? The lowest season? point I remember I got to was one day when I had gone to my sister's house because I'd moved out. So I used to blame her that she's the one making me drink. <laughs> And then I was living somewhere else, <laughs> and she was having a party. I came, she was having a party. I uh, swore I wouldn't drink. I drank it. I don't know what I drank, but the next morning, mm. I tried to go to work, and I was working for ambassador. And I was leaving the house without a skirt. The watchman had to tell me, Madam, hujawa a skirt. I go back, I struggle, I struggle. What? I come back, he's standing on my way again. What? Uh. I won the skirt, but I won the petticoat on top. Mm. And he's the one who's telling me go to the hospital and I'm abusing. But eventually I went to the hospital. I was mm -hmm. given a stopper because I was refusing to listen to anything. And yet my pressure was up and, you know, they gave me a stopper, which is an injection. which just completely mm -hmm. slows it because they had to admit me. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether eventually because I was fidgeting as they did it. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that is eventually what messed up my leg. But when I got sober, eventually mm -hmm. my right leg was kaput, my right hip, mm -hmm. which at some point had healed, but now it's just kaput again, all over again. It's terrible. I, I walk like a kiwete kapsa. That is the, the present I got from alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> it it left it. something. It has to give you something. When I was in rehab, I was so smug. People have dents and what, and me, I was just fine. Kumbe, this one was going. Agnes, to um, Kimarzana uh, Wesasa. Uh, I want us to, to, to wrap it up, final, uh, give us a final word to Kimaliza Imaneno. Uh, maybe you can uh, give to that person who is watching you today. Recovery is possible for both the families and the alcoholic addict himself. Um, when we separated, I, I went to a church and heard a uh, priest saying that there is a program. Hmm. That is a codependency, CODA, we call it CODA, and also Alanon. This is for families of alcoholic addict. I was persuaded by this religious person to join this program, only to realize I needed the three programs, including the Alcoholics Anonymous program. And when I joined, mm -hmm. remember we had separated, mm -hmm. I, it, it took me, it, it took my husband, 10 years to believe that this very good program for my wife and my children have now started jumping and feeling good about themselves okay. can help me. Mm -hmm. And he joined. Mm -hmm. And he recovered. He recovered. He recovered. As we speak, he's okay. He passed Thank on you. after five years. Ladies but he passed when he was mm -hmm. in recovery. Mm -hmm. 
that is a plus. Wow. Thank you so much for coming, ladies. I, I really appreciate your presence and I uh, wish you the best in uh, everything that you're doing, even as we're advocating for, you know, uh, uh, people to know more about these things. Because from this conversation, women are really affected mm -hmm. from alcohol and drug abuse. And I have so many questions that I need to know, but uh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation a, 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 another day. But thank you so much, Brenda, for coming. Thank you for having me. And of course, thank you so much, Agnes. Welcome. It's, it's a pleasure. And uh, the hashtag is uh, why it is a power talk show on Twitter at Ramaguko and at Y254 channel. That brings us to the end of this show, of this conversation right here on Power Talk. My name is Ram Aguko. It has been a pleasure being with you uh, from the beginning till now. The end. I hope you've learned something and I hope you're going to change. Uh, I know that uh, you're going to look into your family and find out how you can be able to solve the issue of drug abuse and addiction and alcoholism. On behalf of everybody, everybody that ensured this show was a success, thank you so much. This is Power Talk.